Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be doing a little introduction to the Canvas LMS API. What we're going to end up doing in this is we're going to show you how to actually get assignments in a given Canvas course. And so um, what we're going to go ahead and start by doing is Google search Canvas LMS API. You'll find this by Instructure. Um, if you end up going over here to the resources, you can end up finding all of the different endpoints. They kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown for the API policy as well as the schema of um, how they set everything up in here as well as authentication. You do need to end up getting an access token in your Canvas. Um, so if you end up going into here, you can actually go to this, go to settings. And then in here you can actually scroll down um, and then right here in this area you can click new access token you click this you can put in a purpose if you leave this blank it will not expire your access token will not expire at any given date and time when you click generate token what you'll then do is get a pretty long string of characters as well as numbers um, you want to copy that and then write that or keep that in a very safe location make sure nobody ends up getting that um, but then what we can end up doing is we'll pass it into um, this uh, app scripts and so i actually have this uh, mine listed up on the top it's actually underneath my hidden access token function um, and so if i end up calling that i can end up going just like this um, variable access token equals and then I'm just gonna end up calling this token or this uh, function um, this is just for security reasons um, so that I do not actually show you what my access token is please be very very careful do not show anybody your access token make sure nobody's able to see that um, but anyways this is the canvas LMS API uh, documentation and so what we're gonna end up doing um, for this little introduction is we're gonna actually go over assignments um, and so we can end up going to assignments there's also many many other different things you can end up doing um, with this um, so what we want to end up doing is we're gonna end up listing assignments um, and so you can see this is the actual URL um, this part right here the API v1 courses then there's a course ID we're going to end up inputting that. Additionally, in front of this is also going to be our Canvas domain as well. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be the endpoint that we're going to end up using here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a variable. Um, so you should have the access token in there. Like I said, make sure nobody sees that. Uh, but then what we're going to do is we're going to put Canvas domain. And so this is going to be the Canvas domain that we actually have for the school. Um, and so if you end up going to one of your Canvas courses, you can end up um, simply bringing this up, copying and pasting this. Um, we're going to end up going with this .com forward slash. Now at this end part, you want to go API forward slash v1. Now what this is going to end up doing is this is going to reference that endpoint of the actual API. And so it's going to be version one of the API. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to want to find the course ID. And so that additionally. It's going to be found in whatever course you would like to end up investigating. For instance, for us, it's going to be AP Computer Science. Our course ID for this course is actually 6730. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that in as a string as well. We're going to go to the next line. Now what I can do is I can do a um, new variable, and I'm going to do assignment. And then we're going to type in endpoint. That's what I'm going to end up creating this as. Um, so now what we can end up doing is we can concatenate the string where we have the Canvas domain. Plus, at the very end of this, we want to end up doing a forward slash. And we're going to actually go courses. And then we're going to end up throwing in a forward slash in there again. Then what we can end up doing here is we can attach that course ID in there, concatenate that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do assignments. If that's the endpoint that we want. And then we're going to do a question mark. And we're going to go access underscore token equals. And then this is the point where we're going to go ahead and concatenate our access token that we ended up getting earlier. Uh, we're going to put that in there. Um, now this is the assignment endpoint. Uh, what we're also going to end up doing is we're going to end up actually making a request for this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put assignments. So I'm going to go down here, it's right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the URL fetch app that we talked about yesterday. And then what we want to do is we want to fetch. Now what I can end up doing is I can pass in that assignment endpoint into here. Now after I end up making that request, what we want to do is we want to actually get the content text. This is going to actually get this as text for us. It's not going to be a whole bunch of numbers in a list. Um, so it's going to make it look a whole lot better. The next thing that we want to end up doing is we can actually reassign these assignments. So we're going to go variable assignments. And basically what we want to end up doing, um, we can put it in as this JSON. Uh, we want to end up getting the JSON and parse this so that it ends up becoming a dictionary is what this actually is going to be. In Google Apps Scripts though, it is the case where this is uh, presented to us as a, a map is what that technically is called. However, in Python, it is the dictionary. And so I usually like to use that. Uh, but then what I can end up doing is I can actually log these assignments in the JSON data. Uh, remember, logger.log is going to print everything out in the console. And so now if I end up going to my intro to Canvas API function, I can end up running this. So now what we're going to end up seeing is there's going to be a super, super long output, right, where it has all of this information in here. Um, and so some things that we can end up referencing in here are um, some of these different things that they end up mentioning on here. And so if, like for the assignments, for instance, if you go up to the very, very top, you can end up seeing all of this information here that we can end up referencing. So maybe you want to end up checking out to find like the, the URL of it. You can end up doing that. Um, so you can do URL. Um, as you can see here, they have that in there. Um, what we can also end up getting is points possible. We can also get the name. So if I put a name here, we've got name right there. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm just going to end up, um, out of the assignments that I pull, it's going to end up giving us these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reference the first index. So this is going to be just the first assignment. Um, you can also end up doing a for loop for this as well. Uh, but we're going to just reference this first index here. And what I can do is I can do dot .name. Um, so we're going to reference the first assignment in our assignments dictionary. And we're going to find out what the name of that is. And so if I run this, we can end up finding for that first one is the project 316 presentation turn. And so now maybe I want to get another attribute of that particular assignment. What we can end up doing um, is we can end up also getting the description. We can also find when it was created at, when it was due at. So let's try the due at. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do this. We're going to take this line here. I'm going to copy that. Remember, you can do control L um, and then that's going to actually get that whole entire line for you where you can copy that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get this. So due at, due underscore at. And so let's go ahead and run that. Um, remember, we probably want to save this too. 
Uh, but then we can end up finding this time that this is due out. Now, as you can see, this is the uh, 659, 59, and then we've got the um, actual time code of Z. So Z, in terms of that, I believe that is the universal time zone is what we've got um, for the actual time zone. If we end up looking on here, um, we can end up seeing this updated at, uh, usually it's, I think, UTC. So this is, uh, but anyways, you end up finding that out. Um, most of our assignments are doing our time zone uh, being 11.59, right? So this is just a different time zone that we're in here. It might be Zulu time or zebra time, uh, but it's basically the military code for UTC. Um, so that's what they end up using on Canvas. Uh, but you know, there's other things you can end up getting too, like logger.log, log, uh, and then we can end up finding, like for assignments, JSON data, uh, referencing that first index. You can also end up getting the points. So if we go on here, you know, we could maybe search on this web page points, um, and we see that points possible are on there. So then I can control C, uh, bring that back in here. We could paste this, and then now we can see for that particular assignment as well, you know, how many points um, that is going to be out of as well. Um, so just kind of just our first intro and how to make our first uh, request uh, using an API, such as the Canvas LMS API. Uh, but there's many things that you can end up doing with this. As we said before, you know, check this out over on this side. You can bring up quizzes as well. So if you need to find some quiz information, um, really anything, calendar information, a um, whole lot of things you can end up doing with this to end up streamlining and automating processes. Anyways, hope that was helpful. Bye-bye.